Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chat channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We work. I make, I'm making this video um, to express my thoughts regarding Errol Spence Jr. He is one of the most feared, if not the most feared, maybe him or Wilder, but definitely one of the most feared in boxing. Period. Bar none. Right? And there's a certain thing. It... it it's like a aura almost where guys like Andre Ward, guys like Floyd Mayweather, it's like The Last Dragon. Any of you guys seen the movie The Last Dragon with Ty Mock, right? Show enough. Who is the baddest? Yeah, nigga, please. Right? And the thing that Ward, Floyd, and now Arrow have in common is. They're so talented that when they beat other talented people, for some reason, it's like, despite all of the talent in which they possess, like, we know they're good. We know Ward is good. He, be, he, he beat everybody in the Super Six. We've known Floyd is good for years since Pretty Boy Floyd, right? We know Errol Spence Jr. went to Kell Brook's backyard. And despite all that skill, aka, there's no real shame losing to these guys people have a hard time losing to these guys what i mean by that is you look at the reaction and yes part of this majority of this is sparked from what eddie hearn said i posted a video earlier shout out to my dude rtd holding it down in the uk and it was from the kill brook versus ravchenko post fight press conference in which Eddie Hearn, go check the video, he says that basically Kell Brook is a better fighter than Errol Spence Jr. And virtually the only reason he lost to Errol Spence Jr. was because he drained himself to make weight, right? Which literally, there's so many ways you can break that down and poke holes. Like that doesn't really sound because, okay, as a promoter, Eddie Hearn is the one that was working with the Eubank family, Chris and Chris Sr., right? He was working with them on a fight for Golovkin, right? At the same time, he was working on a fight with Kell Brook, his fighter, and Jesse Vargas from America, right? And Chris Eubank Jr. fight fell apart for Golovkin. He says he phoned Kell Brook and offered him the same deal that they offered Chris Eubank and the same money. And Brook, being a warrior or whatever, said, yeah, basically i'll take it right i'll jump up two weight classes so you're managing the career of kel brook right why would you set him up why would you set your mans up like that to fight gennady golovkin two divisions higher with no acclimating to the division no tune-ups and then no he has to do handle business with errol spence the mandatory right after that you know what i mean win, lose, or draw, or he would be stripped at welterweight. I mean, best case scenario, you beat Golovkin, and then maybe you, you flex down to 154 or stay at 160. But at least majority of the boxing fans knew that was a high chance that he would lose to Golovkin, just based on Golovkin being a talented fighter, plus being much bigger, right? And being strong. So to now come back and then say, oh, Errol Spence, he, he's, he's good, but he's, he's not that good. We lost because we are weight drained. I mean, I, I don't like that. I don't like the poor sportsmanship. I don't believe that to be the case. Um, because if you looked at it, Kel, Errol Spence look, looks pretty big, but he looked lean. He just looked ripped and lean. Kel Brook looked ripped, bulky, and muscular. You know what I mean? And he made weight. Like, you'll see footage in this video. Like, he looked up to par. It didn't look like they were showing pictures, I think, a week out. And Kell Brook was just jacked. But now, all of a sudden, it was because of the weight. So, to me, Errol Spence, just he has this aura about him right now. And even the people that mention him, either they're, they're 
kind of seeming salty that they lost to him. Just like I said with Ward and Floyd, guys lose like Pacquiao. He lost. Oh, I'm in two, two, two. it's up to my my shoulder in the south. What? No, we're not buying that. Your Ward beats Kovalev, and the guys just don't like certain laws. Like they can't accept Kovalev can't accept that he lost to Ward, and that, that's what it's seeming like with Kell Brook. Now Kell Brook, he's in between a rock and a hard place because there's killers at 154. Errol Spence spars with one of them named Jermel Charlo. And Jermel Charlo is on record saying, I got hit the hardest by Errol Spence Jr. And Errol Spence Jr. has already obliged, I'll be a Huckleberry, you know what I mean? He's already obliged Kelbrook, win a title and I'll come up to 54 and rematch you. He already beat you. So I really feel like, especially since you just beat Rabchenko, you know what I mean? That's a cool comeback fight, I guess, for you. I don't even know who Rabchenko is like that. but. After two losses, I'm not mad at it. You know what I mean? You got to build back. But I feel like Team Brooks should have focused in on, like, Amir Khan, if they're going to try to lure him up, 54-pounders. Leave that man, Errol, alone unless you're really trying to fight him. You know what I mean? But you can't beat Rabchenko and then be like, yeah, we're better than Errol Spence. That's just my take on it. Um, Errol Spence, like I said, there's a lot of guys who either don't mention his name or when they do mention the name, it's not about an immediate fight, like Mikey Garcia. And it is no diss, I, I like all these fighters, but Mikey Garcia said, oh, I'll fight Errol Spence. But you're not, you got your own fight in March 10th, and you're not trying to fight him after that, right? Danny Garcia mentioned it, and then I haven't heard any follow-up. I haven't heard like, oh, I'm back in the gym already. I'm training for Errol Spence, you know what I mean? Sean Porter already said that, man, that's not the direction that we're going. I wasn't checking for Errol Spence three years ago, two years ago, or last year. So I'm not worried about him now. I'm I'm after Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia. Uh, who else is there? I mean, you just not not many people. You know what I mean, Amir Khan says he would fight Errol Spence Jr. But again, he has to get past Phil LaGreco. And because if you beat Phil LaGreco, that don't mean you can beat Errol Spence. We all know that. I mean, because Phil LaGreco lost to Errol Spence if, if, if we're into triangle theories right and either way Amir Khan's talking about getting a couple tune-ups before fighting him so it's like everybody got to get off Errol Spence Jr's back and I'm just saying that as a man like just being real you can't say nothing oh why is Errol Spence fighting no compo uh because the IBF mandated that he has to fight Ocampo to secure and keep his title if he can defeat Ocampo but, I mean, why Ocampo? Why is he not? You know why he's not fighting these other guys. You know what I'm saying? And then, like like I said, people like Kell Brook, they're basically, basically, you know what I mean, making excuses on why they lost. It's just crazy. So, to me, to otherwise proven, Errol Spence is, he's kind of the man to beat. And he's the, he's the guy with that has this momentum. Terrence Crawford is the only one that even remotely sounds realistic about wanting the smoke. You know what I mean? Wanting an Errol Spence Jr. fight. You know what I mean? Because I haven't heard him backtrack or anything. You know what I'm saying? But people like even Jeff Horn. Jeff Horn called out Errol Spence, but then he fought Gary Corcoran. So as far as I'm concerned, a lot of these guys have called out Errol Spence, but it's not for an immediate fight. Because like I said, if... If you beat Pacquiao and you're confident in that win, why fight Gary Corcoran? Why not contact Errol Spence? If you're coming to America to fight Terrence Crawford in April, you could have not fought in Australia versus Gary Corcoran and came to America and fought Errol Spence. You know what I mean? But I don't know, man. It's unfortunate for fighters, certain fighters, like even Rigondeaux. Rigondeaux had to move up two weight classes in one failed swoop because he, was, he wasn't getting any younger. And because guys had clearly, clearly avoided him in or around his immediate division, 122, 126-ish. And we know Riganel particularly, he's been knocked down before, and he wasn't the biggest guy. I think he could have made 118, but the money wasn't at 118. Like if Chocolatito or something was at 118 and Chocolatito wanted to fight Riganel, I'm pretty sure Riganel could have made 120 or 118. You know what I'm saying? So to me... This is not like Errol Spence Jr. bandwagon. I'm just merely telling you what I see. And guys seem to have a hard time losing to 
to Errol Spence. Like I said, Kell Brook, his promoters talking about, oh, Kell Brook's a, be a better fighter. It was just the weight. It was it was me weight, the, the weight drain, me weight. You know what I mean? Leonard Bundu, he did an interview, and I mean this is his opinion, but Leonard Bundu got stretched by Errol Spence Jr., where he was folded like Bermaine Stavern versus Wilder, and he says, oh, but Keith Thurman hits harder. What are you talking about? Keith Thurman, you went the distance with. And you had Keith Thurman's face looking tattered up. Errol Spence, you went to Betty by. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what it is about Errol Spence Jr., but that's just the observation. And I felt like making a video. I just, I guess he has the the Mike Tyson aura. And I'm not saying he fights like Mike Tyson. I'm just saying that aura where until major vulnerabilities have been shown, doesn't look like people are chomping at the bit to fight him. Let me know your thoughts, drop it in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video, it's Ego Sign Up. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.